moron! Hey, moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the Wooa Water Boy, dude! Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Man, I am as excited as can be. It is Sunday. Another week is in the books. And today, 5 o'clock Eastern, we will have our Zoom call. If you are a channel member, here's how you get into being part of the zoom call we've been doing it now for three years originally starting out because of our frustration with the dallas cowboys it was a bitch session and it ended up being also a way to get through sundays without football and if you are a channel member the link will be in the community tab for you to join in and be part of the stream and of course i always love hearing what everybody's thoughts are on the Dallas Cowboys. So here's some good news, I guess we could say. I, I guess we could definitely say there's some good news that Jerry Jones's master plan is working to full effect. And by that, I mean that the Dallas Cowboys, by not signing any free agents, big name free agents, and spending any money, they are tied with the Baltimore Ravens with the most comp picks maxing out four and it looks like next year we will have three fives and a six i know you're thinking yeah well that's it well you know when you think about last year cowboys using a fifth to get stefan gilmore and a fifth to get uh brandon cooks two guys that actually ended up making a great impact for the team and when you think of what baltimore gave up as far as compensation for odell beckham jr for one year 15 million the cowboys were ahead of the curve with that move maybe just maybe some of those moves may be there and with the cowboys knowing that they will get three uh, excuse me four additional picks may be a little bit looser with making some trades because now that the draft is over with Teams are looking at their roster and they're saying, we got this guy and we got that guy that we didn't expect. Well, maybe we can go ahead and get something for a guy who's going to have an ex you know, expiring contract in a year. Or maybe a guy that we might cut, maybe we'll take a sixth round or a seventh round or even a fifth round draft pick. The Cowboys, knowing that they're going to have extra capital, could actually be able to make some moves that could end up being better than some of the free agent moves. I pointed out yesterday, one of the free agent moves that does not get much publicity because we get told that, you know, we didn't sign the Von Millers, you know, the Derek Henrys, uh, of course, that wanted to come here, that we didn't sign him, or, you know, that the Cowboys wouldn't pick up the phone and call DeAndre Hopkins. These major moves, we get told about those moves that we should have made that would, of course, made us great. But they don't talk about the ones that we actually did that weren't sexy, that actually made a difference and is working out well. One of those, a one, one of those ones that was made three years ago was Malik Hooker, who signed for a veteran minimum, $900,000. And you see him, of course, going into his fourth season with the Dallas Cowboys, being ranked in the top 10 in pass coverage and fourth um, in run stopping. Cowboys signed him as a free agent. Now, I dare say there's a lot of those free agents that you've seen the Eagles sign that have been one, two-year hits or even some of them that don't even make it that long. So, you know, there's something to be said that those things are part of the reason why the Cowboys have been able to be at least competitive, being more competitive than what they've given, given credit for. And if this season, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, mm, again, let me drink a little more of the coffee here. If this season is going to be successful, 
it's going to be because of the Cowboys' homegrown talent that they always bring in. We always get surprised surprised by some of the guys we didn't expect to actually step up. And constantly the Cowboys end up letting people go, and people go back and they kill us for it. Randy Gregory! Oh, my God! How can you not sign Randy Gregory? Well, Torrance Armstrong filled in really well. Last year, it was Dalton Schultz. Oh, my God. Dak Prescott's security blanket, Dalton Schultz, the Cowboys. They just don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. How are you going to let that guy go? And it ended up being Jake Ferguson stepping in and playing actually better. So before we kill them completely, before we kill them completely, especially because we're still 123 days, I believe, 123 days away from the season starting. And do you really want to sit here and be in a bad mood for the next three months? Why don't we wait and see? Because I've been here many, many times before. In fact, everybody who uh, joins our Sunday live streams knows that we have been. Let's wait and see what we're going to see. Let's give them a chance. And we might be surprised that we're a better team than we think. Um, I want to go to 105 The Fan and listen in because they have Will McClay and his take on the players that they picked and reasons why. Once you finish the draft, in my mind, you just get to go on vacation for a little bit. <laughs> but in reality, isn't that like when the work actually, actually begins again? Yeah, that's when the, the work actually starts. I mean, we've... Uh... We, we uh, wrapped the toys up and, and uh, got uh, knew what we got on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and now we get to unwrap them next week when they come in. Whenever people talk about the potential of some of these draft picks, does that mean that the toy that got wrapped up doesn't have batteries just yet and you're working on getting there? Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good assessment. I mean, there are some batteries in there, but we need to make them the supercharged Duracell. Uh, you know, there's batteries in there. We just got to get the batteries to fit uh, to fit what we're trying to do. Well, that's that leads directly into this. How often do you see a player in you, in like your mind? You envision it. I can't wait for this coach to get his hands on this player. And do you have like a pairing that you're like particularly excited about for this year? Um, you know, I don't want to put any pressure on particularly excited about one player or the other. Um, I think I'm excited about bringing in. Uh, useful uh, energy and some guys that we like into the process. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it's unique in that, uh, you know, we got to hit the ground running when these guys come in and they've got to learn a whole new language. They've got to learn a whole new building. They've been in their mm -hmm. schools three, four, five years. And so it's a different environment. We just want to get them in and indoctrinate them the right way. Where do you, where do you see Cooper Beebe and Nathan Thomas starting out position wise? I think the key with both of those guys is the versatility to play multiple positions. Uh, I think that Cooper, you know, playing, shoot, he played all of them in college. Uh, he's not ideally a tackle at the NFL, but he's an interior player. We'll work him at guard and center and the same uh, with Nate. Uh, it was a tackle in college. He does have tackle ability. He can play both sides, but he's mm -hmm. also got the body type to go inside and play guard. It, okay, can you tell me a little more about BB's like with the traits that you saw in him that made you go, okay, he can play center too. Well, um, it's a, it's the fact that uh, he he played inside at guard. Um, mm -hmm. He showed the ability in the Big Twelve to kick outside and play tackle. While that length is not ideal, but his ability to process, uh, command a group, um, you know, lead a group of offensive linemen. Those are traits that mix in well with center, and he has done it before. Mm -hmm. so that's just an added thing to go in there uh, and, to, and to be able to compete with the guys we have in there. I think BB's film showed me, like, this dude has a nasty streak on him. Like, he'll, he'll he punch you in the chest does. and knock you down. I kind of like that about him. The, and I saw that in Thomas, too. Was that a trait you are kind of looking for in that toughness and offensive line? Yeah, I think, you know, because they're asked to do uh, the unnatural things. I, whenever I turn on the tape or I'm watching the game live 
as much as I love the game of football, there's one thing I wouldn't do is be an offensive or defensive lineman. Yes. Um, but, you you know, in order for us to continue to improve and get over the hump, it's that, it's that physical, nasty nature mm-hmm. that these guys bring and that they will learn how to do it at an NFL level in the rooms uh, from the coaches and the players we have in there. But in order to get over the hump, we've got to continue to try and get bigger, stronger, faster, and more physical. Amen on that one. Marshawn Marshawn Nealon fitting in with that physicality. That's another potentially violent player. I know a lot of people here, defensive linemen, or think edge automatically. Are these? Is this somebody who you're thinking for Dorrance or Dante Fowler's role, or do you think this is somebody that can also get work done in the middle and stop the run? Um, I think what he is right now is an edge player, uh, being the you know the big end or the open end as we describe them. The open end is more of the edge rusher. The big end is more of the guy that sets the edge and does some things in the run game. Uh, and we think he fits either role as well as potentially being able to go inside and rush on nickel. I mean, the biggest thing is the motor, the physicality, but also the ability to finish when you get there. You look at his um, his measurables, his height, weight, speed, arm length, all those things. There's some upside as a rusher, but what he is is violent. Uh, he He's very athletic, and he's got a unique way of playing off of and through contact. I, I know Mike Parsons, obviously, an un, unbelievable player, all pro, just tremendous. Do you think if there was room for improvement, it would be in the run-stopping department? I know so often he's Everybody drafted here the quarterback, was focused but on that. do you feel as though that is perhaps an area of improvement for Micah? I think it's an area of improvement for our defense as a whole, um, and, and it's playing the run. I think when, people, when you have pass rushers and you have cover guys and you have a defense that uh, people don't want to see in those third-down passing situations, what they're going to try and do is – run the football and, you know, make it an unpredictable deal where you can't pin your ears back. So that mm-hmm. means that everybody in their roles, they got to be prepared to play the run, and they have to do it at a higher level than we did last year. That's Micah and everybody else. Do you, do you think that, uh, from our side, I, I talk about this a lot, that we put too much weight on the defensive tackles and linebackers as the run stoppers and not enough on those edge guys? No, I think it's, it's, it's total 11 defensively. It's the it's the run fits. It's uh, you know, defense is about controlling gaps. There's enough. There's a. There's you know, all you have to do is you have to cover all your gaps, and guys have to play their responsibility. So it falls on every position, and then being in sync with each other. And so you know, we have a new system coming in, and within that system, guys have to understand their keys, all those things, and where to fit in the run game. So it's collective. But you know, I think. Here's here's my take from what they did with the draft. Um, the Cowboys, if you go back to Jerry Jones when he was asked if the Cowboys have a culture problem, and the culture problem, as he responded to it, is if running the football and stopping the run is a culture problem, then yes, we have a culture problem. And it seems like that's exactly what the Cowboys have been focused in on this draft, trying to get more physical and get more of an attitude and get bigger. And I think that's where Mike Zimmer actually comes in and really makes a difference because, let's be clear here, our defense was more finesse than being physical last year. We were great at getting up the field. We were great at rushing the passer and things. But sometimes you just got to be able to go blow for blow, shot for shot, and be able to take it and give it right back. And we just were not able to to do that. Now, you see that we've got more size. Um, when you look at the makeup of our, our defense across the board, um, you look at Mozzie being penciled in as a starter, and they're looking for him to be about 350 pounds. You look at the physicality of an Eric Kendricks. You look at where we are building. Cowboys back in with Diggs back and healthy is really good. Now we got to work on the front end and make sure that at the point of attack, we can get some hay. And so that's where we have it, good people. Um, I like what we've done. I would like to see us have done more, 
But maybe now that we've gotten all of the draft uh, out of the way and that we've gotten all of the uh, free agency losses with the comp picks, maybe we'll see the Cowboys start to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, next week, the 10th of May and 11th, will be Rookies Minicamp. And can't wait to see our guys on the field and see where we go from there, good people. Uh, before you know it, training camp will be here. And uh, I can't wait. I'm ready to get this thing going on. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys, as always. Peace out.